Hello everyone, welcome back to Bleed Electrical. This is course on energy management and audit and I am Triveli Naidu from the Department of Electrical Engineering at St. Vincent Paloti College of Engineering and Technology, Nagpur. In the previous video series, we have already covered the topic energy and mass balance. Now let us move on to our unit number 4 that is energy action planning, monitoring and targeting. So why this energy action planning, monitoring and targeting is important? because we have to analyze it for these reasons so the following contents will be covered in the following series of lectures firstly energy action planning then force field analysis then energy policy purpose perspective contents formulation ratification then organizing the management motivation of employees then marketing and communicating and lastly monitoring and targeting techniques so we'll be seeing this one by one in various topics so let's start with the introduction. Why is it necessary? What do we require when we talk about our strategic plan? Okay, any successful energy management program within an organization needs support of top management. Now what does top management are supposed to do? It should give energy efficiency equal importance apart from what manpower, raw material, production and sales. So these are important but however energy efficiency is more important as far as energy management programs are concerned. So it should pay attention on that. So the other important requirements that could be included while considering a successful energy management system are well charted strategic plan and effective monitoring system and adequate technical ability for analyzing and implementing energy saving options so it is said that the pillars of successful energy management systems are firstly the technical ability second is the monitoring system Third is the strategic plan, then fourth is top management support and ultimately as a result of these four pillars you have successful energy management system. So we will be discussing on this one by one. So we will be talking about top management support, then strategic plan, then monitoring and technical ability. So let's start. So now these are the steps in energy action planning. Firstly, what you are supposed to do? You have to make commitments. You have to decide the various policies. And then you should assess the performance and set goals. Once you have a dedicated policy for energy management system, you have to assess how, how and well, how well your system is being operated. Means how much profit are you getting? And you have to set goals accordingly. Then you have to create a plan of action, a concrete plan you have to prepare. So all these things we have already discussed. Let's We are simply revising this in this unit as well because this is the core of this subject energy management. Then once you decide this, plans you have to start implementing these plans and then you have to evaluate the progress of these plans what all things you had planned is it taking place or not and how well is it taking place and then finally you have to recognize the achievements of your employees the help of your employees in achieving this action plan so you have to make them for you have to recognize their achievements in order to motivate them so this is how and then you have to reassess all these things that have been done so this is nothing but a flow chart for steps in energy action planning so firstly you need to make commitments then assess the performance and set goals then you have to create a plan of action then you have to implement this plan of action then you have to evaluate progress then recognize the achievements and the process will go on and on and you have to keep reassessing things so that the organization benefits from your energy plan of action then i already told you about the top management supports so let us see what top management support is all actually about okay and the detailed study of top management support in which we'll find various things done by top management support then top management support Top management shall make commitments to allocate manpower, the funds to achieve continuous improvement and it should also establish the energy management program, leading organizations, appointment, appoint an energy manager, form a dedicated energy team and institute an energy policy. So what this top management is actually doing, it is appointing an energy manager, then it will locate the energy manager according to its specification then it will form a dedicated energy team in order to look about 
in order to keep a check on the energy management system then it will institute energy policy so these are the four basic role that a top management does so we'll see this one by one so let's talk about appointing an energy manager now what are the task of this energy manager we have al always been discussing this in the previous lecture series so the task of energy managers are setting goals tracking progress and promoting the energy management program an energy manager helps an organization achieve its goal by establishing energy performance as a core value so we have already seen what role does an energy manager have it will track progress it will set up goals it will promote energy management programs and not only this the energy manager should understand how energy management system helps the organization financially and environmentally both okay and the depending on the size of the organization the position of this energy manager could be full, full time or it could be in addition to the various responsibilities it could be the role means you could have a production engineer maybe but we can we can assign him a task of being the energy manager as well so this can also be done by the help of top management support then secondly the location of energy manager where this energy manager should be kept so that he keeps a check on the energy management system well so the energy management functions whether vested in one energy manager or a coordinator or distributed among number of middle managers usually reside somewhere in the organization so it could be the responsibility could be laid on one particular uh, person or it could be uh, distributed among number of people who are working under the management so that multiple people are there to look after the energy management aspects so this could be done then exactly how and where that function is placed is decision that needs to be made in a view of the existing organizational structure so we firstly have to know about this organizational structure how these organizational structure is actually formed and how we can distribute the role of energy manager so we'll be seeing it in the upcoming slides okay then the second is third is form a dedicated energy team so what what is the uh, significance of uh, having a dedicated team there will be several things that it could be uh, doing in the organization the task of energy team are executing the energy management activities across the different parts of the organization it ensures integrity in best practices okay and create energy team helps us to integrate energy management activities in the organization not only that in addition to planning and implementing specific improvements the energy team measures and tracks energy performance and communicates with the management employees and other stakeholders because it is constantly keeping a check on the energy man management techniques and what all problems are there it will convey it to the management and what all suggestions are there it will convey it to the employees so likewise it can work now the size of this team will depend on the size of the organization if it is a big organization it's very difficult for the four five people to work as far as energy management is concerned so we'll have a more people team so this is how it is decided so now we'll we'll see carefully how this organization structure of energy management is actually framed so taking a example or a case study of some organization so likewise we can have a plant management then it can be splitted as energy management division then manufacturing section 1 maybe manufacturing section 2 then we can have other sections like accounts the human resource development expansion then research and development etc so so many sections you could have now under this category of energy management division you could have uh, energy manager then you could have the nodal officer from each departments so you can either have this exclusive energy manager over here or you can decide among these nodal officials whom you want to assign the task of being the energy manager that could also be done by the top management then manufacturing section 2 could have shop manager then shop manager could have nodal officers from the energy management system so this is how you can frame or you can arrange the organization structure of energy management so this could be one of the 
helpful techniques in forming the team and you could also allocate the responsibility of energy manager along with this organizational structure then if we see for hindalco this is the example i have taken from hindalco so they have management like director chief officer manufacturing then they have a chief officer finance and commerce then they have a central technical cell then they have various sectional heads under this they have a central energy cell then they have a head section coordinator and apart from this then under this there are certain uh, you know units working like alumina then reduction then fabrication then boiler and cogeneration and rectifiers then utilities so under the central energy cell all these five things are working so this is how they have planned for hindalco and so many other companies are there which have a certain organizational structure in order to have a you know efficient energy management system okay then lastly the top management is supposed to institute an energy policy so now energy policy could help you in several ways okay you know energy policy is something that will actually decide what are the targets you need to set okay and what are the perks that people would get once they have uh, uh, you know uh, cooperated towards the energy management system ha uh, contributed towards the energy management system we can say so energy policy provides the foundation for setting performance goals and integrating energy management into organizational cultural and operations and it formalizes the top management support and it articulates the organization's commitment to energy efficiency for employees the stakeholders the shareholders the community at large so this is how energy policy plays a damn important role in this okay then if you have a formal written energy policy it will act as a public expression of the organization's commitment to energy conservation and environmental protection so yes the particular organization is very much interested in the development of the environment it does not want it in a reductant way okay so it would be a public expression okay i'm declaring i'll do i'll contribute towards the environment like this okay then a working document to guide the energy management practices and provides continuity it is in the company's best interest that supports for energy management okay and this could help you in setting of goals in setting the vision and mission statement of the company and so many other things so let us study this with the help of an example so now there are typical uh, formats of an energy policy okay now declaration of top management's commitment and senior and middle management's involvement in energy management then statement of policy and then statement of objective separated into short and long term goals so it could be made in typical formats okay we'll see the example for this also then actions have the ceo or head of the organization officially issue the policy then involve the key people in policy development to ensure cooperation so it's not a one person job okay to Uh, form this energy policy a group of people will come together will discuss on this there will be a brainstorming on this and you'll get a nice energy policy formed then tailor the policy to organization's culture okay so organization might be having some vision and mission statement so you have to make sure that the policy is in line to this organization's culture or not then make it understandable to the employees and public like you have to also explain it to the employees so what all policies you have framed the employee should know what is the significance of one one point of this policy then consider the skills and abilities of management and employees this is another thing then include detail that covers day to day operations so this is how the actions need to be taken in the energy policy formation or ratification we can say then communicate the policy to all the employees and encourage them to get involved in the policy then i have taken two examples of energy policy firstly you can see the energy policy of indel now indel hirakund are committed to continuously improve our so they are you know uh, giving their statement okay so what are are the things they are going to do this is their energy policy we have taken so 
energy efficient so uh, to meet the above goals we will strive for they have committed energy efficient power generation aluminium smelting and casting because it's an iron industry okay so so they have promised in the similar pattern so nurturing energy efficient designs and technologies for all future acquisitions wherever practic wherever practicable then enhancing utilization of renewable energy resources wherever feasible then recognizing efforts of our employees and their family members in energy conservation initiatives then going beyond standards wherever economically viable then yardsticks which drive us to monitor and improve energy performance through periodic reviews and skill upgradation of our employees and they have also committed that as a part of our energy conservation and environmental strategy our organization means indel is committed to reduce its specific energy consumption by a minimum of 2% from the present level by the year 2010 so this is an old one this policy but uh, maybe they could have changed it now so this is how they have to portray their energy statement policy so similarly i have taken one more example of energy management policy that is of reliance industries okay so reliance has committed so their mission is to be the lowest specific energy consumers in the industry they operate to maximize the use of renewable fuels and low energy level fuels in their operation and this is the plan they have made manage efficiently the utilization of energy resources upgrade hardware and employ cleaner and more efficient technologies then train their employees to make reliance the pace setter in the area of energy conservation then carry out regular internal and external audits to identify areas of improvement then benchmark continuously their performance against the best in the world and enrich their experiences on energy conservation by exchange of ideas with other organization and promote awareness among all the members of the large reliance family so they have committed so many things in the energy management policies so i hope you all have understood about the top management support and the uh things they cater to us okay the top management actually is responsible for taking care of the appointment of the energy manager then the location of the energy management then building up of the energy team and lastly we have seen the energy policy so that's all for this video in the upcoming videos we'll be seeing the rest of the topics in this unit thank you